All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rechakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone who rule and teach well. Peace, love, salutation to the elect. 144, uh, first fruit, all right, the elect. And um, <clears throat> we're going to jump right into it. This will be another installment of let's take a look into it and this will be number 11 again i'm the brother kasha Quan from the gms atlanta church and we're going to jump right into it what we're going to look into are the seven kings of rome okay because rome started off as a monarchy and then turned into a republic ultimately turning into a an empire okay but we're going to look at the inception of rome and the inception of rome was around you know during times of king philip Stuff like that <clears throat> Or even before that Alright Rome started Coming about <sighs> Shit All the way During the Assyrians Okay All the way in during the Assyrians So it says the king of Rome Was uh, the chief uh, magistrate Of the Roman kingdom According to the legend According to legend The first king of Rome Was Romulus Which we're going to get into Again, these look into it are a synopsis. All right. I just want to bring out the, the, the picture and then y'all go look it up. It says who founded the city in 753 B.C. upon the Palatine Hill. OK, upon the Palatine Hill. Seven legendary kings were said to have ruled Rome until 509 B.C. 509 B.C. was during the Persian the Medes time. So Rome was always in not really they weren't really prominent and you know well known they were on the come up okay it says when the last king was overthrown these kings ruled for an average of 35 years which which is correct <clears throat> average of 35 years and i got some i got some notes right here written down romulus ruled for about 47 years uh new matter of fact let's scroll down real quick all right it'll give you the kings all right so Romulus ruled for about 47 years. Uh, Numa ruled for 42. Tullus ruled for 32. Um, uh, Ancus ruled for 24. Um, what's his name? Tar Tarquinius, he ruled for 38 years. And uh, Servius, he ruled for 44 years. And Tar uh, Tarquin... Um, uh, super super bus he ruled for 27 years with a total of about 254 years was uh <clears throat> was rome a monarchy okay all right so i'm gonna read something out of this book right here it's called the roman empire I, this is a good book to learn as you can see the roman empire all right a good book book to learn about the roman you know the inception of Rome, all that stuff, and all the way, even in the back of this, towards the end of the, the last chapters of this book, it even compares, not even compares, it literally says that Rome would be America today. If I could find it, I'll get it, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and do what I do here. So this is about the seven kings of Rome. It says, the number seven was highly symbolic in the in the classical world, of course. It's still symbolic to us today. It says uh, there were seven wonders, seven sages, and of course, seven hills of Rome, which could easily have been any number of five to twelve, depending on one counts um, the protrusions of the volcanic ridge that makes up the coronial, uh, uh, vimenial, and esculine hills, which I have all those pulled up right here all right we're gonna start right here it says the coronial hill is one of the seven hills of rome at the northeast of the city center it is the location of the official residence of the italian head of state who resides in the coronial palace all right <clears throat> it says history is the original part is it was the original part of a group of hills that include collis um, Eusebius, if I'm, I'm saying I'm butchering this, um, these are now lost due to a uh, building in the 16th century and later. It says, according to Roman legend, the Quirinal Hill uh, was a site of a small village of the uh, Sabin, uh, Sabines, 
uh, the king uh, uh, Titus Tate Tate I don't know how to say that Titus I'm just gonna do that <laughs> would have lived there after he had been after the peace between Rome Romans and Sabians the these Sabians had erected altars in the honor of the god Quirinius where it says Quirinius where you get um a certain men okay certain men named Quirinius when you look them up like matter of fact I'm about to look up one guy right now pub Blius um Quirinius Varus this guy Quintilius that's what I want to say it's kind of similar all right Quintilius look this dude up please look him up all right because it'll give you a, a clear understanding of Matthew the second chapter all right and there's uh, another guy I think his name is actually Quirinius um uh, this governors of Syria governors of Syria <laughs> List of governors of the Syria. Okay, boom. You see, uh, let's look, let's look. Um, I'm off. But there he is again. Publius Quintilius Verus and Gaius Centius Saturninus. Um, there we are. There we are. Publius uh, Suplicius Quirinius. Okay, they they you the Romans usually name themselves after <coughs> certain things that are prominent, and one thing that was prominent was this Quirinius god that they worshipped. Now going into a uh, viminal, vimenial, if I'm saying that right, hill, the vimenial hill, was the smallest of the famous seven hills of Rome, a finger-shaped uh, cusp pointing up uh, toward central Rome between the Quirinial and to the to northeast in, in the es Esculine, Esculine um, Hill to the southeast. It was the home of uh, Tetro, in the uh, Terminian or Ter Termini railway station. All right, that's pretty much it on that. Okay, and then we got the Escaline Hill. It, it's one of the seven hills of Rome. Is the su southernmost cusp is is the uh, Opius or Opian Hill. All right. It says, uh, let's see. Uh, rising above the valley in which was later built and caught in the Colosseum, the Escaline Hill was fashionably a residential district, so it was pretty heavily populated. Again, I'm just going to just touch bases on this. You can go back and look through it. Okay, so back to the Roman kings. All right, so continuing, it says uh, historians back in this book, it says uh, historians are skeptical about how many of these kings existed. The kings of Rome may have been real figures who coincidentally numbered seven or completely fictional characters. The topic is hotly debated between literalists, historians who generally accept the Roman tradition and hypercriticals who fill all Roman history before uh, who fill all Roman history before the first Punic War of 264 BC is basically invented. Well, when you kind of look into, I kind of think this was a. Uh, I don't think this was, you know, um, fake. I think these uh, these men ruled. Now the way Romulus got his position, okay, I think that was a myth. But I think there was a Rom Romulus going all the way down to Superbus. All right. So, again, I'm going to come out of this book and read about Romulus and Remus because they were twins who were fighting for a uh, rightful spot. I'm going to read fairly quickly. It says, The legend of Rome's most famous twins tell us much of how the Romans saw themselves in their origins. The mother of the, two, the, mother of the twins was Rhea, Rhea Silva, a member of the royal family of the city of Alba Longa, uh, who was made a vestal virgin by a, uh, a usurping relative. This move was meant to prevent Rhea from having children, so when she became pregnant, this meant her execution. Some forms of legend claim that the king deliberate, deliberately raped Rhea, wearing a helmet to avoid being recognized. If so, the plan backfired because Rhea definitely claimed that the father of the twins was, was the war god, Mars himself. Okay, see, this is where we're... Alright. 
Okay. This idea gained enough popular uh, support to save Rhea's life, but the king ordered the newborn children to be thrown into the Solon, the Solon River Tiber. Um, a kindly servant put the twins in a basket, into a basket. You see where they're getting this from, man? Who else went to a basket on a river? Moses. Okay, this this is fake. I believe this is fake. But I think there was a Romulus, a King Romulus. That There has to be somebody to, like a progenitor of something to, you know. But at the end of the day, these are Edomites. Okay, it says, when it was floated ashore, the pair were found uh, um, and suckled and suckled by a she-wolf who had lost her cubs adopted by later by a shepherd that the pair grew up unaware of their origins when they did discover the royal birth they marched to Al, uh, Alba Longa and overthrew the the uh, usurper king uh, however the twins decided to find uh, decide to found a city of their own the site was a subject of debate eventually Romulus had his way and, be, and began building walls on the Palatine Hill which was mentioned here, all right. When when Remus mocked his efforts, all right. When Remus mocked it, when Remus mocked his efforts by uh, vaulting the earthworks, he was slain by a, a furious Romulus. So Romulus killed Remus, all right. His brother. And Edomites have the tendency to do that, going all the way back to this. They have the spirit of Cain. That's what Cain did to Abel, because he was furious and you know, jealous of of Abel. So he killed him. That's the same thing Romulus did to Remus. Not giving him any type of, you know, whatever. Just he's a fucking Edomite. <laughs> it says once the city was established, Romulus ruled as a king. At the end of his rule, he mysteriously vanished. Okay. Either taken up by the heavens as a god, hell no, or killed by senators. Yeah, that sounds about right. Who smuggled away his body parts under their their togas? That yeah, sounds something like an Edomite would do. Okay. It says this story shows that the Romans. Shows that Romans having their cake and eating it too. All right. And that's an Edomite for you. That's a damn Edomite for you. Okay. So I'm going to get Habakkuk real quick. And this goes along with. This goes along with how Edomites get their king, you know, their, their kingdoms, man. It says, uh, I'm going to start at five. Habakkuk two and five. Yay. Uh, yeah. Also, because tra he transgressed it. He transgressed by wine. He is a proud man, neither keepeth at home. All right, who enlargeth his desires, hell in his death, and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heapeth them unto him all people. Now, why can't Romulus just be a regular individual and let Remus have his own city? Y'all made each separate cities, you know what I'm saying? But because Remus built a wall, you got furious and mad, and you tr and because he wanted to emulate things that you were doing, you got mad. Instead of supporting your brother, you kill your brother. That's a Edomite spirit. Okay, this is how Esau. This is the 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 development of Rome. Okay, and this is what we get today. This is an extension of Rome. All right, America is an extension of Rome, and this is this is you could say this is America's inception as well, and this is how it was made. It says, "Shall not all these things take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his?'" And that's going on today. It says, "How long <clears throat> into him that laid it uh, ladeth itself with thick clay?" And that's speaking about economic collapse, meaning he's he's heavily in debt to these other nations. Verse seven, it says, shall they rise up uh, suddenly that uh, shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee and thou and thou shall be for booties unto them. OK, the booties is like spoil. OK, but real talk, the, the missile is going to come. There ain't going to be no spoil here for, you know, we're not going to spoil America. We want shit here. We just want this place to be destroyed. Blood for blood. All right. Verse eight, it says, because thou hast spoiled many nations. All the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood. And that's how they f the foundation of, uh, of Rome became because of uh, spilt blood. All right. And that's how the foundation of America came because it spilt blood. The point is in verse 12. It says, um, for the violence of the land, of the city and of all that dwell therein. Verse nine. Woe to him that covereth, uh, coveteth an evil co uh, covetousness to his house that he may that he may set his nest on high, that he may be 
uh, delivered from the power of evil. See, that's exactly what Romulus did to Remus. All right. He 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 was evil. All right. It says, woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house. That he may set his nest on high. He had he's like, oh, I gotta get rid of Remus so my nest could be high. Alright? So my city can flourish. Alright. It says, verse 10, it says, Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people, and has sinned against thy soul. Verse eleven, for the stone shall cry out of the wall, and the beam out of the timber shall answer it. Verse twelve is the point. Woe to him that buildeth the town with blood, and establish it. A city by iniquity and that's exactly how Rome was established which we're reading right now he killed his brother all right so I'm gonna keep reading because it gets more to the point it says this story shows the Romans having their cake and eating it their, their origins are noble a princess and a god but simultaneously humble shepherds boys possibly raised by a prostitute lupa means either she wolf or prostitute when you look it up, that's crazy. It says the birth of Rome is both divinely ordained, which correct it is. The Lord did set up Rome. He did. Every nation that's ever been set up is the work of the Lord. It was divinely ordained, just like the kingdom of Israel will be divinely ordained, but except it will be forever. All right. Every other one of these nations had their time. OK, it says the birth of Rome is both divinely ordained and founded on blood and murder. Habakkuk 2 and 12. Woe to him that buildeth the town with blood and establisheth a city by iniquity. Was that? Um, uh, I'm like a Nahum 3 and 1. I want to say matter of fact, just want to get it, I guess. It says, woe to the bloody city is full of lies and robbery. The prey depart if it not. That's right. Woe to the bloody city. And Rome is a bloody city. Shit, he killed himself to, in order to, uh, he made a blood sacrifice of another Edomite in order to establish Rome. Okay. So again, woe to him that buildeth the town with blood and established a city by iniquity. Okay. The Romans built Rome off of bloodshed. Okay, it's simple and easy as that. Okay, simple and easy as that. All right, so let's go back to the seven kings real quick. And of course, you got the seven kings right here. And I'm gonna read, I'm gonna keep reading a, a little, uh, some more out of this. Okay, <clears throat> uh, no, actually, that's that's all I wanted to read out of that. All right, but Rome began as a monarchy and these were the seven kings go look these kings up and see you know all you know whatever they did but we're going to look at Romulus real quick it says that was the legendary founder of the first king of Rome in the first king of Rome so he was the progenitor of Rome okay he was a progenitor of Rome shit this could be Alexander the Great <laughs> I know you know, I'm just speaking as a man. It says various traditions attribute the establishment of even he has own, his own coin. So, you know, kind of it says Romulus and his his uh, his twin brother Remus, who he killed. All right. Many of Rome's oldest uh, legal, political, religious, religious and social institutes of uh, to Romulus in his contemporaries. All right. Although many of these traditions incorporate elements of folklore. And it is not clear to what extent an historical figure underlines the, the mythical Romulus. The events of the institution ascribed to him were central to the myths surrounding Rome's origin and cultural traditions. Like it said in this book, man, Rome was a divinely ordained, man. If it's folklore, whatever, a legend, whatever, bro, that things had to happen to get the inception of Rome. Simple as that. When people think Rome... They just think Julius Caesar. You got to go back. 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 There was after Julius Caesar it came Octavian or Augustus. And then you just keep going. All right. Until that last uh, Roman Empire. And then the Byzantine Empire comes about. But even to the inception, you got to go like Julius Caesar is like the middle point. All right. Because that's when the, 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 the Republic turned into an empire. Then that then came the second triumphant. All right. But. 
you got to go back and just really look at um, uh, in Esau's origins, you could say. You know what I'm saying? But this was divinely set up, and he divinely set, the Lord divinely set up Romulus to do what he did to his brother Remus in order to uh, be the progenitor of Rome. All right? So I, this is another installment of Let's Look Into It. Lord willing, you know, you could go and look on, uh, look up each one of these hills. There's a lot of hills, actually. Like it says, it's seven, seven pillars, you could say. All right. Or seven hills that were, you know, but these three were kind of prominent, you know, and look up re the story of Remus and, and Romulus. And like I said, <laughs> Lupa means prostitute. So they weren't raised by no she wolf. OK. All right. They weren't weaned by a wolf. If a wolf caught them there, it would have devoured their ass. No, probably a prostitute got them who's been neglected by her, her village or something because she just spreads her legs to everybody. And she wanted kids, but nobody wanted that. <laughs> I don't want that problem. And she picked up these two kids and had them and raised them. Simple. Okay? That sounds like a more legitimate uh, story, you could say, or historical fact. All right? So, Lord willing, y'all edified. I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Mechakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. Peace out, salutation to you. Elect 144, first fruit. I'm the brother Kasha Kuala. Until next time, we'll say Shalom.